What's on guys, welcome back to our channel today. So over the last couple of months you've seen us exploring Cornwall, showing you the sights and the hidden gems that we found along the way. Um, unfortunately today the weather is terrible, just like last week on our 11 and a half mile run where we got absolutely drowned, but it was good fun anyway. Um, yeah, so this week we thought we were going to change it up a little bit and we're going to tell you the pros and cons of living in Cornwall from a local perspective. Now, we managed to narrow it down into four in each and we're going to start with the cons first. So, the first one is that Cornwall is a very poor area and it's one of four UK areas that qualified for a poverty grant from the EU. Um, obviously, we're not in the EU anymore so don't really know what's going to happen with that. Um, but yeah, this is like completely different to what Cornwall was like in the 1800s. It was probably one of the richest areas in Britain, um, if not the world. Like when we had the copper tin mining, um, the industry was massive. And the fact that once all that sort of packed up and times moved on, it never got replaced by anything. The only thing that has survived from that sort of era is the fishing. And that's obviously scaled back a lot to what it used to be. Um, so there's there's not really any any money coming into the area. All the jobs are sort of set as one thing. There's no sort of like higher end no. jobs, anything like that. I think everyone's got quite a big misconception of Cornwall as well because obviously everyone comes down here on holiday and they go to the nice parts of Cornwall which are holiday destinations. They don't see the poor parts and they just think of it as this rich little county when actually it's quite the opposite really. Yeah. And that, I think that as well links into when people come down here, they obviously only see the sort of like seaside destinations. That, and that, a lot of that is um, people who are trying to make a living for maybe six months of the year. Yeah. And then they've got nothing to go back on for the rest of the year. That's it then. Yeah, because most of the um, holiday season, it runs from like end of March to the start of October. Mm. And in that time, it's only quite, it's quiet other than the summer really. They make the money through the school holidays. Yeah. As best as they can. And the same thing with, with these ho uh, holiday towns where people go. Yeah, they're really, really busy when people are down here. But in the winter months when no one's down here, they're... Dead. Yeah. There's <laughs> no one in the shops. There's no one... It's all these small businesses are trying to make their money. Yeah. It's like the per that's the sort of perfect time that the locals like us go down places like that and yeah. sort of do our exploring not ideal because the weather's not <laughs> as nice but no yeah yeah so the second one is i find particularly strong because i'm not a big fan of driving that much yeah. it's the roads so obviously everywhere around here there's one main road really yeah, in the, the whole A30. of Cornwall. Um, but the rest of them are quite small back roads especially if you're going somewhere a little bit out of the way the back roads are thin single track <laughs> Yeah. Not really anywhere to pull in. Most people don't want to reverse, so you have to reverse as well down yeah. a little back road. Yeah, the roads just don't really support the like infrastructure of everything. Um, I think the A30, especially at the minute, like they've put traffic lights when you get down to St. Earth, they've put traffic lights on the main road. Like, why have you done that? <laughs> <laughs> it just it doesn't make any sense. And you just, like roundabouts like Chivy. Is a pain in the ass. It's just terrible. No one indicates that like, you you've got no. It's a free for all when you get on. Like no, you just don't know where anyone's going, and you you find that like as you go around like roundabouts. I think Avers is another one. Yeah. Like it's just a mess, and yeah, I just don't think anything's really thought through. And obviously now we've got the new A30 works going on to bypass Chivy to Carling Cross. And that is going to be a nightmare. Yeah. But especially in the summer, like, I just... Yeah, that's the other thing, is obviously we do have a lot of tourism. So when there's everyone down here, and there's, I don't know, a caravan... Yeah. ...trying to drive down this little tiny dirt road, and you're just trying to whip round and go to work or something, because most of us work through the summer... Yeah. And you just can't get anywhere. And when you do, it takes you double to three times the amount of time it normally would in the off-season. Yeah, and tractors. <laughs> tractors. tractors are a pain in the ass. Obviously, we need them a lot in Cornwall. 
I just think it's funny because everyone jokes about tractors down here. Like, if you're from up country, they're like, oh yeah, cool, more tractors there. Yeah. It's actually a thing. <laughs> yeah. Like, we all hate tractors. Yeah. Because they're but always we need in the way. Yeah, we know we need them. But they always seem to be on the road at stupid times as well. Yeah. Like, at rush hour in the morning when everyone's going to work, you're driving down the A30 and then there's an, a tractor in front of you. It's a nightmare. Not ideal. So the third con is that there's not a lot of affordable houses. Now, I know that they, all these building sites and stuff like that, you see them with signs up out the front, affordable housing, oh yeah, loads of affordable housing going up, phase one, two, three, and you think, oh yeah, that'll be, uh, that'll be nice, we need some affordable housing. And then you go and look how much, that, how much that they cost, and they're up like 200,000 pounds, and you're like, right, as for a little two bedroom with a small <laughs> garden. Yeah, I think a like perfect example of that is that just between Scoria and Mount Ambrose, now they've there's a big housing estate gone in there and we, yeah. we actually looked at them when we were um, looking for a house. And yeah, 200,000, like no young person can afford that. No, because predominantly down here as well, it's young couples who have lived here for all of their life who are then looking to just buy their first home. And they can't afford that because the wages down here don't accommodate for the prices of the houses. Yeah, there's no reflection and like, all right, when, when we bought our house, we, we managed to get a 5% deposit. Well, we ended up paying a little bit more than that and yeah, yeah. it was like seven or 8%, but I'm not sure you can do that now, can you? I'm not sure at the minute, no. no. So obviously to get a 10% deposit, you've got to have 20,000 saved up. Which um, for a young couple here is, yeah, it's just years of work really. Yeah. There's obviously costs on top of that, it's just, it just, it doesn't work. Yeah, it's just called <laughs> one of those weird places where the house prices are the same as somewhere like London, but the wages are yeah. one of those lowest in the country, it yeah, doesn't. Yeah, they just don't go hand in hand, it's terrible. No, not at all. And a lot of the affordable houses down here, people who have got the better wages are buying them to let them. Yeah. So then no one can buy that house because it's being rented out. And then people are getting stuck in the renting cycle and aren't able to buy it because they can't afford it. Because they're paying 300 pounds more on rent than they would be if they had a mortgage. Yeah. It is a terrible cycle. It is. So that leads us to our last one, which sort of we've covered in all three really. It's just summer is rammed. <laughs> <laughs> Quite honestly, it, in the summer, especially last year, when coronavirus was happening, no one was really allowed to look abroad, but you were allowed to, to go on holiday in that little like bit we had, that gap in summer, that everywhere was just, it was chaos, yeah, quite right. honestly. You couldn't go anywhere without there being thousands and thousands of people down here. Yeah, I think the prime example of that was when we went up to Newquay, like we, don't, we rarely go to Newquay in the summer because it is just notorious for being busy yeah so yeah we went or mum had some family down and um, we met them for food at Fistral Beach and it wasn't a nice day it was like grey it was spitting with rain I've never seen so many people come yeah. off the beach in my life <laughs> there so must busy. have been like a good few thousand people there yeah it was unbelievable I've never seen anything like it yeah and it's hard, it's hard for us because obviously we know we need the people down here to make the money but at the same time, it sort of ruins our summer because realistically, Cornwall doesn't get very nice weather that often. No. We get a few weeks in the summer, if we're lucky, and when we do get it, we want to go out and we want to go to the places that we haven't been for a while, and we can't because yeah. it's almost like, there's nowhere to park, car parks are full. It's silly places like even St Ives. St Ives is a lovely little town, but you'd have to park like in Hale. <laughs> <laughs> and get a train down. But you have the park and ride, but I don't know that's if that's I mean. even But you'd have to do something like that because you can't park because it's yeah. full and there's so many people there. Yeah, we have been quite lucky like the last few months where everything has started opening up again. It's been dry, but it's not been exactly warm. But I mean, it has given us a little bit of time to like get out and about while there hasn't been so many people there. So that's been quite nice, isn't it? Yeah, but it's like when it is sunny, on the odd occasion we want to go to the beach because and actually sunbathe, because that never happens to really. <laughs> We don't do no. beaches and sunbathing, because they're here all the time. Um, but when you do want to do that, to find a beach that the tourists don't know about as such, mm. is quite hard now, because all the 
nice hidden beaches everyone's posted about. Yeah, like us. Well, yeah, but, <laughs> but they're not really hidden anymore because everyone knows about them. No. So it's, it's hard not, to find a quiet beach. It's sort of like this area as well, like surrounding us, you've got Port Reef, Port Tower, and like St Agnes. And then obviously you go down that way and you've like got Gadrivi, Gwivi and Hale. They're all like relatively well-known beaches and like you go around to the south coast and to Falmouth. It's like they're, they're hot spots so you sort of got to go further afield to find the quieter beaches which I don't really mind and you find nice little coves and like coastline that you wouldn't have ever seen before. So it is it's, it is kind of nice. Yeah, actually. and we can't really moan because we'll moan about driving 45 minutes to go to a beach. Yeah. Because. But then they've driven <laughs> five four hours, hours five yeah. hours, wherever they've come from to. Yeah, um, to get to a beach. Yeah, that they never see before, so we are quite lucky. Yeah. And we do that. We do moan about driving. <laughs> if we've got to drive more than 20 minutes to go to a beach, we're probably moaning about it. Yeah. Which is quite selfish. Because I think, I don't know, the furthest you can be from a beach in Cornwall, 20 minutes. Yeah, and that leads us on to the pros. Yeah. So pro number one is you're never too far away from the beach. So yeah, especially where we live, I reckon five minutes, maybe, well, yeah, five to six minutes, probably you're in Port Reef. Yeah. And then if you want to go to the south coast, 15 minutes, yeah. you're in Falmouth. So yeah, and they're obviously like, as you've seen from our previous videos or any pictures of Cornwall, like it's just beautiful. Yeah, and then once you hit the beach, which is 15 minutes, you could walk to the next beach. Yeah. And the next beach and the next beach because they're everywhere. They're just. Well, just follow the coast path. Like yeah. A lot, of, a lot of people like do like walking trails, stuff like that. Like Cornwall is a walker's paradise, isn't it? Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and we quite like to do that. You can just go to one beach and then you're like, oh, we'll just go over the cliffs and see where we find. And that's usually when you find yeah. the best hidden An beaches. Absolute beauty. Because there's somewhere where no one's really been, no one sees. Yeah. But they're stunning. Yeah. Which leads us on to pro number two. Which is the beautiful scenery. Yeah. So obviously we've got the coast, which we've talked about, but we've got loads of, it's look, we're surrounded by the sea and fields essentially. Yeah. We're not a really, we're not a concrete place. We're not. No. So if you, yeah, up. you want to find beautiful scenes, you either go to, go to the beach, go to the coast anywhere. Um, just up from us is Cambrai, and if you climb Cambrai, like you've literally yeah. got 360 degree views. And there's quite a few places like Absolutely that around stunning. here as well, aren't there? There's yeah. hills where you can go up. So you've got Carnmarth, which is another five minute drive away from us. Yeah. The St Agnes Beacon that you can go up. Yeah. Obviously Brown Willy, which we did the other week. Yeah, and from there, obviously, you just like beautiful scenes. Yeah, there's so many places like that you can go. And then there's loads of just little walks, isn't there? Where yeah. You go through some like up just near our house, it's farmer fields that you go up and. Yeah. Which then goes around. into like one of my personal favourites, which is all like the mining history, stuff like that, that you can see scattered around Cornwall, which is. Yeah, there's lots of like mining trails, isn't there, that you can walk yeah. through, which is really nice. And we've got lots of woods as well that are nice to walk yeah. through. And not scary woods, like actually nice, pretty woods. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and it's all like steeped in history that you can just, on your doorstep, wherever you're staying, you're never too far away from like a beautiful walk or, no. you know. And if you want a, to some Cornish culture, it's, it's everywhere, isn't yeah. it? Littered. So the third pro, obviously we've already incorporated this a little bit and I think this tops Everything. anything really, which is quality of life. And I think quality of life, of life above anything really. Um, like obviously we've been to cities, London, stuff like that, and it's like very noticeable, like the air you breathe in yeah. when you go to London. It's like it's got like a certain smell. You can like smell the like the pollution, yeah, <laughs> yeah. like the emissions, um, and like the, even silly things like light pollution. You can go to places here and it actually be pitch black. Yeah, and you look up at the sky, and, and you I see think people the stars. don't like some people don't even realise that that's a thing. Mm. But yeah, there's some place here, there's just no pollution. Because we are lucky we're not built up, we've got the fields, we've got places like that. Yeah. Even our biggest city, Truro, it's not really it's built not up. big. <laughs> and you're like, you you go there, you walk around like the main main like couple of squares or whatever, and then if you went to the outskirts of Truro, you're you're in like fields again. Yeah. It's yeah. just it's just not very built up at all, which is ideal and 
like when it comes down to it. From my point of view anyway, I just, I couldn't live in the city. I, no, I couldn't now. It's just like on your doorstep, you, we walk two minutes up the road and we're in like vast open fields with beautiful views. But yeah. like nothing beats that really. The freedom of it, it's like a whole different thing, isn't it? Yeah. Like I know we said the roads are rubbish, but we can actually drive on the roads. <laughs> you you put up with that because of like yeah. the things that Cornwall brings. Because of where you're driving to essentially. Yeah. You never drive into somewhere that looks horrible, are you? No. You avoid those places. Well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so that, the last one, this is my personal favourite. Yeah, I, I quite enjoy this one as well. <laughs> it's pasties. Everybody and, um, loves a pasty. And I know everyone will say they've got Cornish pasties wherever they live. It's not true. No. Right. This is a big thing. A Cornish pasty <laughs> consists of steak, potato, yeah. turnip and onion. Right? And that's it. That is it. So all these people, right, all With these companies. their carrots and their peas yeah, and their pasties. The Cornish pasty company that you see, where did we go? Waterloo Station in London. The Cornish pasty company. They put peas and carrots. Yes, in their pasty it's that is wrong and also if you want to come up and tell me yeah i've had a cornish pasty before i say all oh, right where's that from then was it like a rose or a malcolm barnica or you know cornish <laughs> oven and you say no it was a ginsters yeah wrong i will tell you to get out because that is not a pasty not even made in cornwall no they've given themselves a cornish flag on it <laughs> made in devon aren't they i, I, think, they're, I think they're devon which is even worse but it's an absolute joke. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, Cornish, proper Cornish pasties. And if you can find a place that does homemade Cornish pasties. Yeah, then you've hit the jackpot. Yeah, you've won. <laughs> and there's other things, there's like loads of other foods that we have, which are sort of local delicacies really. Yeah. Our fish and chips down here are incredible, especially if they're locally sourced. Welcome stranger. <laughs> and also if we're talking food, and if we're going on to scones, do not call it a scone. <laughs> Who do you think you are? It's a scone. You don't even call it a scone. No, I just... I it's just, a scone. Just, yeah. It's if we're scone. talking about scones, the jam goes on first, right? That is it. End of conversation. I don't even like scones because I don't like jam and I don't like cream, but I still say that the jam goes on first. So to round up, we just like to say, obviously, there's a lot of people we know that are interested in moving to Cornwall and we love that. There's a lot of people that move down here and they make a big difference to the community. They join in, they do lots of nice things. If you are, just be considerate of everyone who is a local, who's lived here all their lives. It's quite hard for us. We want to welcome you in, but there's also a lot of people giving you guys a bad rep. <laughs> to be quite honest, yeah, there is. I think that's fair to say. Yeah. So come down and be considerate. Try not to steal all our houses, please. Don't, <laughs> <laughs> don't buy it as a second home, and especially if it's somewhere that needs it. Yeah. So there's a lot of fishing towns that they they need that house to go to work. Just think about that before you come down. Have a bit of a research about the areas that you're looking into before you come down here. Sure. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, that was nice. Yeah, so thank you very much for watching our video today, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, could you give the video a like? And I would wholly appreciate it if you could subscribe to our channel as well. It would really help us out. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll catch you next time.